What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games, and today we've got some new Keyforge cards to look at. We are looking at another little batch of untamed cards, which are going to be coming out in set two. Age of Ascension. I told you about that live stream that Fantasy Flight Games did recently, and I showed you some Shadows cards from it, and yeah, there are some untamed cards as well, and I thought, you know what, we should probably have a gander at these, and we're going to start off today having a look at a card called Fang House. Now, I love the design of Untamed. It's not one of my favourite houses to play, Although, anytime I can get a Schnuffle Gator in, I'm getting a Schnuffle Gator in. But Fang House looks like a really fun card. Now, on the one hand, it is a free power creature, and it doesn't have Elusive, and it doesn't have Skirmish, which means it's not difficult to take down. Or at least it wouldn't be if it didn't have all these other skills. So, first of all, it's got Assault Free. So when you attack with Fang House, you deal free damage before the attack. So there's a whole bunch of creatures out there where you can just destroy them before you even get started. One of my, well, favorite creatures to play with, least favorite to play against, is Ember Imp. It's one of these set one creatures from Dis, which restricts you to playing two cards from your hand during your turn. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, not ideal. So you can get rid of this, and here's the key. You don't take anything in return. Now, to be honest, this makes it kind of like Skirmish. Skirmish is a skill whereby when you start the attack, you don't take anything back. Elusive is, if you are attacked, it takes two attacks the first time doesn't do anything. So if you're against something like an Ember Imp, you just KO it anyway. Why is this better than Skirmish? And the answer is, well, let's say you're against a five power creature. Let's say Ancient Bear, because I love him. Now, Ancient Bear has also got Assault Incident. He wanted a few in set one that did. So generally speaking, they've got five power, you've got three. So you'd instigate an attack, you do free damage, but they'd KO you and you'd kind of come off on the losing round of that. Whereas now, you do free damage because of Assault free. then you do free damage, they do 5, you still get KO'd. But you're taking down a creature that is bigger than you, and that is a good thing. But you've also got Hazardous free. Before this creature is attacked, deal free damage to the attacking enemy. So let's spin it around and assume that you're against an Ancient Bear. An Ancient Bear is trying to attack you. Now, interestingly enough, they've got Assault 2, so they would do 2 before the fight started. But that's fine, you'd survive that hit. Then they would take 3 because of Hazardous 3. And then you deal 3 damage to them, putting them up to 6, and they'd be KO'd. They'd deal 5 damage to you, putting you up to 7, and you'd be KO'd. And both creatures would be destroyed. That's what Fang House does here. It's still a free power. It's still probably not staying on the field very long. But the key is that you are much more likely to take someone else down with you than you would be if you didn't have these skills. Now, we're also guessing the, I'm going to pronounce it wrong so many times, Tantadlin. Tantadlin? I need to check that with someone. A nine power creature! Nine power is huge. Back in set one, nine power was the cutoff. Nine power was a point at which something had to give. There was always a downside when you were a nine power creature. Like Shadow Self, for instance. It was a nine power creature, but it didn't actually deal any damage when fighting. Well, the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, this does deal damage when fighting. The bad news is you only deal two damage when fighting. Which will probably sound a little bit familiar here. Because this is not the first creature we've seen in set two that only deals two damage when fighting. Just the other day, we looked at Roxador, incidentally also from Untamed. And Roxador only deals two damage while fighting. The difference is Roxador does not have the power of Tantadlin? Tantadlin? Yeah, this is going to be a problem. 
So it's weird that we've now seen two untamed creatures, and we've not seen that many untamed creatures from the new set that are limited to two damage when fighting. So look, you got nine power, so you're going to be able to take a couple of hits. But when you're attacking, you essentially have two power. But when you fight, you discard a random card from your opponent's archives. Now, archiving is a lot of fun. I did a video about it. I'll pop a link in the description. And essentially, you build up cards in your archive. And at the beginning of your turn, you may choose to take your entire archive or not at all. So one of the best, it's not the only, of course, but one of the best uses for archiving is build up loads of one house so that you can then have a monster turn because you're picking up an extra four or five cards from one house during the turn we're going to use that house and life becomes good now this discards a random card from their archives but it still does discard from their archives and the other thing is right if they've only got one card in their archives you know which one's going down here. This can wreck your opponent's plans, ladies and gentlemen. This can be really bad. In the video we did probably yesterday, we had a look at new Shadows cards. And one of the new Shadows cards we looked at was the really, really fun Sucker Punch. And Sucker Punch, basically, when you play it, it's an alpha card, so it's got to be the first thing you do during that step. You deal two damage to an enemy creature, and if you destroy them, you archive it. And you've got an ember bonus and deal two damage when you play it. It's a really fun card. So if they do get lucky enough to archive it because they're able to orchestrate a KO using it, imagine how much fun it's going to be when you discard it at random from their archives. A lot of fun, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a lot of fun. The downside of Tantadlin here, you're not really going to KO much. Yeah, there's plenty of cards like the aforementioned Emberimp that will go down, but you don't do much damage. That's bad. And even your 9 power, still, it's not going to take that much to whittle that down and KO it. And anyone that's played with Shadow South will know, decent turn, Shadow South will go down. But the fact that you get this fight skill to discard a random card from your opponent's archives... I mean, look, there's going to be games where your opponent doesn't have an archive, and that's going to suck. Because then you've got kind of a bit of a wall, but you're not doing much damage. And the skill isn't being used. But against decks that really want to archive, this is going to be great. Quick friendly reminder... You only get the fight skill if you instigate the fight. If you are attacked, you don't get it. Hey, why don't we take a look? Oh my god, they're everywhere! Yeah, that's the card. They're everywhere. It's got an ember bonus. And that's good. When you play it, you get an ember. And when you play it, you deal two damage to each enemy flank creature. And one damage to each enemy creature that is not on a flank. So essentially, you just get a whole bunch of damage down. And maybe you'll find some one or two power creatures, which will be fun. But even if you don't, you're still going to get a lot of damage down. This really reminds me of Positron Bolt, one of the Logos cards from set one, which also had an Ember bonus. Now that one did three damage to a flank creature, one to a neighbor, and one to the second creatures of a neighbor. This does two to all the flank, one to all the non-flank. But this is going to get a lot of damage on the board. This is going to get a lot of creatures within range of being taken out. And it's not like under Mothership support, whereby you get a choice of where the damage goes. It's two to a flank and one to anything not on a flank. But that's okay. It's not going to allow you to have targeted KOs on creatures. That's just not what the card does. What the card does is get damage on the field so that your battles and your other action cards can work towards getting that KO that you want. You will get lucky sometimes and get some destroying with this. But even if you don't, you just bring down the effective health of every creature on your opponent's side of the board that doesn't have armor. Armor will block this or partially block it. Depends how much armor they've got and how much damage you're doing, really. But I like this. This can get a lot of damage down. And finally, the wonderfully named 
Way of the Porcupine. Now, of course, thematically, this fits in beautifully with the set one card because I don't know how many people are aware of this. There were only actually two upgrade cards that Untamed had back in set one. They were numerically the two final cards of the set and they were Way of the Bear and Way of the Wolf. So having Way of the Porcupine, I mean, look, I've never found porcupines quite as scary as wolves or bears. If you're asking me, I've got to fight one of these creatures, which one do I want to fight? I'm fighting porcupine any day of the week. I'd rather not fight any of them if I'm honest, but given a choice, that's what I'm going for. But I love that thematically, we're going along here. And we got an Ember bonus like we had on the other two cards. And it gives the creature to which it is attacked hazardous free now we did look at hazardous free because that's what fang house has before the creature is attacked you deal free damage to the attacking enemy and we don't need to go into a lot of detail about this because we already looked at it with fang house but it basically means that you're taking down other creatures with you they attack you and you're either taking them down with you or doing more damage than you would otherwise be doing even if you don't take them down of course way of the bear gave assault too which I suppose makes Way of the Porcupine better, because three is a larger number than two. And Way of the Wolf gave a creature skirmish, so that they could start a fight without having to take any damage themselves. So, I love what they've got going on here. And I look forward to seeing which other animals we can learn the way of in set two and beyond. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. They are the new cards that we saw from Untamed in the live stream the other day. What they do and how we're going to use them. And at this stage, I would very much like to know how you're going to use these cards and how excited you are for them. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but please do remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossie where we talk about games. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wassy Plays.